that mixing and matching vaccines may actually be beneficial. So I think we have to be very careful as, um, as clinicians and scientists when we talk about mixing and matching. So I think we have to be very careful as, um, as clinicians and scientists when we talk about mixing and matching. Mm. And, you know, it's not something that we should do without evidence. We do have some preliminary uh, evidence out of, for instance, the United Kingdom. Getting two doses of Pfizer vaccine was, was good. We know what those responses are. Getting uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine followed by a single dose of Pfizer. So one dose of AstraZeneca, one dose of Pfizer gave you responses that were almost as good. Mm -hmm. Reversing the order, giving Pfizer first, then AstraZeneca, wasn't as good. And giving two doses of AstraZeneca uh, had the lowest response. But we still know that that response is protective. Mm. So I think that we have to be very careful when we talk about it. And we have to be uh, speaking from the perspective of having evidence right. to support the things that, that are justifying changes in policy. So, Dr. Kim, you're saying the vaccines of the same category, for example, mRNA vaccines, right? That, that's what you're talking about, not mixing different categories of vaccines, uh, or they can be mixed too. So, in fact, that the, the studies that are being not done now are mixing and matching many different kinds of vaccines. So mm. the Janssen vaccine with a, a Pfizer vaccine or with a Moderna vaccine or Sinovac or Sinopharm with other vaccines as well. And, and the idea is to understand the impact of mixing these different doses. There's a practical reason as well. Many mm. countries around the world are using whatever vaccine is available. Mm -hmm. And if they need to boost, we need to know whether it's, it's possible or good to mm -hmm. mix um, vaccine A with vaccine B um, as, as either a primary vaccination or as a booster vaccination. 